What a friend I found Closer than a brother I have felt your touch A friendship like no other Jesus, 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 friend forever. Hello, I'm Bishop Philip. I'm the Bishop of Burnley, and it's really good to join you as we come to the end of our virtual youth pilgrimage, Friends for Life. And that's the theme that I want to address today. But first of all, I want to tell you a bit about my niece. My niece is called Naomi. Now, Naomi and I are quite different people in many ways, but there's various things we have in common. Perhaps above all, we're both ferociously competitive. If we join in with anything or play a game, we both desperately want to win. And that used to show itself most particularly when she was a bit younger and we often played snakes and ladders against each other. When we played snakes and ladders, everyone else in the house would leave us to it and crikey the fur would fly. There'd be shouts, things would be thrown, there'd be fights, it was terrible. Well one day, Nemi and I were playing snakes and ladders and the atmosphere was even worse than usual. We were absolutely ferociously angry with each other and bawling and shouting. And then I realised why things were so much worse. You see, I was playing snakes and ladders to the normal set of rules. I was going up the ladders and down the snakes. 
namely for reasons that are to this day obscure, was playing her own version of the game. She was going down the ladders and up the snakes. So there we were, in the same room, playing the same game, with the same board and the same pieces and the same dice. But we were playing that game to completely different sets of rules. Now that strikes me as a pretty good model of what it means to be a Christian. We play the same game as everybody else, but to a completely different set of rules. What do I mean by that? Well, we live in the same world as everyone else. We spend the same money. We eat the same food. We go to the same schools. We do the same jobs. We live on the surface the same lives. We're doing that to a completely different set of values because the heart and center of our life is Jesus and his relationship with us. So that means that being a Christian affects every decision we make, every pound we spend, every relationship we form, every aspect of our life is evangelized, changed by the gospel. And of course that in turn makes a big difference to the kind of friends we are in our daily lives. I'm sure you've got all sorts of friends, some who are Christians, some who aren't. Perhaps you've got friends of different faiths, perhaps you've got friends of no faith at all, and that's great. We need a wide range of friends, but as Christians, the way we live out our friendship should be different. We should be distinctive and stand out in the crowd because of the kind of friends we are. And that's because we try to live as Jesus lives. We want to be the sort of friend that Jesus is. Now the greatest ultimate act of friendship is the cross. On the cross, Jesus spoke these words, greater love has no one than this, to lay down one's life for one's friends. On the cross, Jesus laid down his life for us so that we could be friends with him for life. Through the cross, Jesus has destroyed sin. He's destroyed death. Jesus has destroyed all that is enmity with human life so that our relationship with him can last forever, so that we can be friends for life. And on the cross, Jesus shows us the pattern of Christian friendship. He shows us how we too can be friends for life. And in particular, I think on the cross, Jesus shows us three things about Christian friendship. First of all, Jesus shows us that Christian friendship is generous. The cross was the greatest ever act of generosity. On the cross, Jesus was as generous as it is possible to be. He held nothing back. He gave us absolutely everything he possibly could so that we could be friends with him forever. In the same way as Jesus is generous, we should be generous as friends. Generosity should be the very hallmark of Christian friendship. So be generous with your friends. Be generous with your time with them. Be generous in your care for them. Be generous in your hospitality. Be generous in sharing your things. And above all, be generous in prayer. Pray for your friends generously, by name, every day. So that's the first thing. Christian friendship is generous. Then secondly, Christian friendship is costly. Think of the cost that Jesus paid in order that he could be friends for life with you. He paid the cost of dying for you. He went through all that suffering, that isolation, that desolate pain. His friendship is costly. And in the same way, authentic Christian friendship is always costly because a Christian friend wants their friend's good more than their own. A Christian will always put others before self. That's the cost of friendship. And so if your friendship is to be costly, it means that you'll put your, the needs of your friend before your own. You'll put their good first. There is a sacrifice, a cost to true Christian friendship. And then thirdly, Christian friendship is forgiving. On the cross, Jesus died to forgive us from sin, died to heal relationships. And in the same way, we should always want to forgive our friends when they wrong us. And we should always be ready to seek forgiveness from our friends when we wrong them. 
Remember Jesus and Peter. Peter wronged Jesus so badly, but Jesus never gave up on him. He forgave him and gave him a fresh start. And in the same way, when things go wrong with your friends, that's simply an opportunity for, to, for, for forgiveness. Be ready to forgive. Be ready to seek forgiveness. So Christian friendship is generous. Christian friendship is costly. Christian friendship is forgiving. Christian friendship is different. So do you know what will happen? As you stand out as a friend, your friends will want to know why. Your friends will want to know what it is about you that's different, which is why you need to be ready to tell your friends about your faith in Jesus Christ. Don't be ashamed of your faith with your friends. Don't cover it up. Have the courage when they ask to make a stand for Jesus. Next year, I hope that we'll meet face to face in Walsingham and have a proper full scale in person youth pilgrimage. Meanwhile, I hope you've enjoyed this virtual pilgrimage and I hope it's given you space to reflect on friendship. As a Christian, you're called to rich friendships. You're called to be friends with Mary and the saints. You're called to be friends with each other. But above all, you're called to be friends with Jesus, who is the pattern of friendship. In Jesus and with Jesus, we can be friends for life. Thank you for listening and may God bless you as our pilgrimage comes to its close.